Boots, I think we have arrived. I'll stay in the time machine. Where am I? Oh, with my handy dandy backpack, I can travel this empire. Backpack, 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 yeah! What's this place called? It's Songhe, the largest empire in Africa. What about the education? Before Islam, there was no education. After Islam, the children learned. Young people were taught to read and recite Quran. They also learned grammar, rhetoric, logic, astrology, history, and geography. Songhe became an educational and commercial center. What languages do you guys speak? Songhe, Arabic, and Turai. Family is also very important. Male dominates and young men took over the job of their father. Women are not to be seen in public or with men other than their husbands. What clothes do women wear? Brightly colored robes. This place is so cool. Whoa, sorry. Hey, you're not wearing a brightly colored robe. You're under arrest. Relax, I'm just Dora. Oh, well then, follow me. At the castle. What do you want? What do you have? Typical food including wheat, shea butter, sugar tea, peppers, garlic, pimentos, milk, poultry, goat meat, and wheat bread. Anything you want to know about Songhai? Yes, I would like to know about the government. Okay, I'll tell you about the government. I took the throne in 1464. In 1468, I conquered Timbuktu, which had been taken by the Turks 35 years earlier. I also conquered Jain, the richest trading center along the Niger. So, in 1476, Jain surrendered. There are many Muslims in my city, even though I am Islam. Who are you? I'm a merchant that trades with other civilizations. What things does Songhe trade? Gold, salt, cola nuts, slaves. Since Songhe is very big and has a lot of land, what are the natural resources? The natural resources are fish, the Niger River, gold, mines, and salt mines. What are other jobs besides being a merchant in Songhe? Fishermen, traders, miners, farmers, blacksmiths, soldiers, and witch doctors. I want to know more about the economy. Well, there are two separate equally important sectors. There are a lot of rural agriculture and urban trading. Peasants could farm for profit by renting land at reasonable rents for landowners and inhabited by mostly foreign merchants like me. Gracias. Adios, amigo. This is the Niger River. Hola. Are you royalty? Not even close. I'm a peasant. So what level are you in the social structure? I'll tell you a little bit about the social structure. I'm on the bottom along with the slaves. Then it's free men and artisans. Then Sunni Askeus merchant. And on the top is the ruling class. More the end. What do the people on the lower levels do when they meet their king? We are required to bow to the king's presence. Us peasants and slaves work for the king. Slaves could purchase their freedom. What is the difference between a peasant and a slave? Slaves are captives of war, prisoners of raiding expeditions, criminals are enemies of the empire. Peasants are people with low class jobs. Slaves were captured by slave traders. Where do the lower class people live? Royalty lives in town while most of the peasants, slaves, and artisans live in the countryside. Excuse me, miss, but what are you doing? I'm praying to gods and goddesses. Are there a lot of them? Yes, many gods and goddesses. Tell me more about the religion. The focus of our religion was our ancestors. We believe in communication and the living and dead. We believe in possession and that in order to have peace, stability, good health, and prosperity, it was necessary to stay in harmony with nature and God. We believe in strong tradition and kinship, and that our ancestors stood between the good and the bad.
Hey Camel, wait up. Let me give you a ride. So you travel this land a lot? Yes, I know all about the geography in Songhe. Oh, can you tell me about it? Did you know that Songhe is mostly farming land? The capital is Gaia, which is the center of the empire. We found Gaia around 800 AD. We conquered so much land. We expanded our empire in all directions, and after that it stretched from the Atlantic to what is now Nigeria. In 1315, Songhe realized the weakness of Mali, so we rebelled. 1465, we conquered Mema. Three years later, we conquered Timbuktu. I'm thirsty. Let's go get some water by the Niger River. Me too. Let's go. Look, it's one of the king's assistants. Hello, king's assistants. Hello. I'm just fetching water for the king. So you know a lot about government, don't you? Yes, I do. Let me tell you more about the government here in Songhe. There is a Sunni dynasty. The Griots are the official record keepers for education and entertainment. And each region of Songhe was divided into provinces that were ruled by governors. The royalty wanted to make laws to prevent cheating in businesses. Each prov province are in charge to harvest a crop. Artisans were required to manufacture boots and weapons for Songhe soldiers and army. The king's wives and children lived in separate sections attended by slaves. The throne was passed to the king's eldest son or brother, and the king had multiple wives. Did you know that Songhe started as a fishing community? Books are very important. Doctors, judges, priests, and other educated men were maintained under the king's expense. We have 10,000 horsemen, 30,000 men on foot, copper shields, sabers, Gracias, I learned a lot. Will you take me back to the time machine and meet Boots? This is where Songhe is located.